Bluecast X1 castable resin. Let's give it a review. Hey guys! I've never been afraid to admit that I really like Bluecast resins. But I've never been afraid to criticise either where I thought it was necessary. So I was delighted when Bluecast sent me a bottle of their latest castable resin. I've heard a lot of good things about X1 and the perusal of the Bluecast information tells us that this resin was specifically designed with monochrome and DLP printers in mind, which is excellent. Bluecast claims this resin has great accuracy and exceptional detail without shrinkage, which has got to be good. And even better, it has strong addition, so no plate primer is needed, which is a great improvement over earlier resins. I do love the fact that X1 is toxic and carcinogenic component free, which is a massive plus and something Bluecast should take great pride in. Finding printer settings for Bluecast resins is now delightfully easy, and I opted for the Frozen Sonic 4K. I fed this data into my preferred slicer and got ready to do some printing. It's always best to read the information available, and I didn't do a great job, as we'll soon see. But I did notice the importance of warming the resin before use. 30 seconds in the microwave was sufficient to make the resin much more viscous. My first run of prints wasn't perfect. Of the six attempts, only one was any good, and that's what I mean about reading the instructions. Never use contact points under 0.4mm. Well, that's me screwed. I prefer fine and medium supports. With lychee, these contact points are 0.2 and 0.25 millimeters. Even the heavy supports only have 0.35 contact area, so straight away, none of these are suitable for X1. That means all supports will have to be custom at 0.4 millimeters and above. Well, you know me, guys, I'm always a bit daft, so I pretty much ignored the instructions scrapped the light supports, increased the number of medium supports, and decided to have another bash. However, if you've seen my supports guide video, then you'll know I always include some large supports. And with lychee, these are custom and always with a full one millimeter contact point. This really anchors the print firmly to the plate, and this concept is clearly suggested in the X1 guide here. I also decided to reduce the retraction speed by 25%, as slower speeds tend to be a little bit more forgiving. Sure enough, my second print run was more successful. Not perfect, but improved. This time, three of the prints were successful, one of which I'm not going to show you has its a project in hand. Cleaning and curing is a little bit different. To begin with, IPA cannot be used here. Instead, you'll need ethyl alcohol, or ethanol as it's also called. Now, this is great for our cousins across Europe, as I'm told you guys can get ethanol everywhere, and it's nice and cheap. Unfortunately, here in the UK, it's not very common, though Amazon and eBay will hook you up. However, UK guys expect to pay a little bit more than you would for IPA. Cleaning and curing is a one-step process with X1, and you have two choices. One, place your prints in a container with ethanol, agitating now and then for 10 minutes until you see a color change. Two, still using ethanol, use an ultrasonic cleaner for five minutes. To reduce the amount of alcohol I needed, I kept my prints in a small container and filled the ultrasonic with ordinary water. As long as you don't mix the two, this works very well. In either cleaning case, the prints change from green to grey and now need air drying for completion. You could use a compressor for this, 
which should not be used at full strength, or even an aerosol can of air, though these can be costly. I've actually got a mini compressor designed for airbrush painting. It's not strong enough to damage the prints, but it's good enough to blast the greater white, which is the goal here. After this, let the print stand for 10 minutes or so. Now, the printing quality bothered me. In one respect, I was absolutely delighted with it. I thought the resulting details were excellent. Genuinely, these are the best prints I've ever achieved with any Bluecast resin. However, there were failures, and the fault for those was mine. Most of my supports were 0.25mm at contact point, and not the recommended 0.4mm. But what bothers me here is that large supports can spoil the detail on a print, which is, after all, why we use thin supports. So if you can't live with thicker than average supports, X1 isn't for you. So how does X1 cast? The Roman coin you've seen me do before, but this chest theme ring is new to you. I designed this ages ago and could never print it using Bluecast X10. Unfortunately, because of the support issues, this still isn't the perfect choice for casting, but I fancied giving it a go anyway. Now this filigree ring was very kindly sent to me by one of my viewers specifically to try on castable resins, so I can take no credit for this amazing design. Attaching wax sprues was no trouble at all. Well, that's not looking too bad. Let's just give it a bit of a clean. Ah, now there's a definite couple of holes there. However, I've never cast filigree before, so I'm not prepared to blame X1 for this failure. I may well have sprued it poorly. The ultrasonic cleaner took care of the trap plaster and oxidization. I'm not going to make a fuss of clean up here. Two of these castings are duds anyway. Well, I think it's fair to say Bluecast X1 has cast as well as we would expect from Bluecast. There's certainly plenty of detail here. All in all, it's done an impressive job. So what are my thoughts on Bluecast X1? Well, I love how detailed the prints are, but I hate the fact that just like with some of their other resins, we're restricted by the size of print supports that we can use. This means careful cleanup will always be an issue. Cleaning is delightfully simple with no wash and cure system needed, though a little extra equipment like ultrasonic cleaners and mini compressors might well be. Ethanol seems to be a cheap alternative to IPA for most folks, though not so much here in Blighty. In terms of price, X1 isn't the cheapest castable resin that you'll find, but it's nowhere near the most expensive either. I'd say it sits somewhere in the middle. And of course, it casts. But what do you expect? Bluecast always does cast well. So, if you read the instructions properly, unlike this prize idiot, and if you can live with the bigger than average print supports, then you will thoroughly enjoy Bluecast X1. Like all resins, you'll need to tweak your settings and perfect using it. 
For me, this is the best Bluecast castable resin that I've tried to date. And that's another finished review, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line and I'll do my best to help. So take care, guys, and thanks for watching.